Welcome to the course on stress management. Today is the first lecture on the scientific foundations of stress and in this module we shall discuss what stress is, why two individuals respond differently during a stressful situation and definitely explore the history and genesis of stress research. But before that I would like to start with a thought. Imagine just before you switched on the computer today to listen to this lecture, think if your computer would not start and it uh, after a long time, a long amount of effort that you could start your computer, but you realize that there were several important files missing from the hard disk. How would you feel? What were the, what would be the bodily changes that would occur? What would be the thoughts that would rush to your mind. Now many of my students would tell me that this is a panic button and this would uh, immediately the panic button would switch on. Now what exactly is the panic button and why does it switch on in such situations? Let us see. So today in our lecture we will cover this and we will start with what is stress. Now stress can be defined as a response of the body to any demand placed on it. So it could be an external demand or it could be an internal demand. So now what is an external demand? It could be something like uh, the fall in temperature uh, outside, it could be something like excessive heat uh, in the um, in a claustrophobic in a closed up room, it could be a biological demand like the uh, illness trying to affect you and you are feeling queasy about it. It could be a psychological demand like fear of being ridiculed in a public situation. Now why do individuals behave differently during stress? We have seen that a stress affects individuals differently because of the way they perceive the stress stressful situation. So it could, I will give you an example. Say a uh, uh, teacher comes into the classroom and says that all of you have failed this exam and mind it this is a very important exam. There will be many students who uh, start crying or who get really perturbed by the teacher's uh, statement, maybe some are not bothered at all, maybe some rebuke the teacher uh, for the way he has corrected the, the paper. Now, why do people respond differently? One of the reasons is that it depends on the perception of the situation as well as the individual's perception to cope with the situation. So if there is one individual who thinks, oh God, this is the end of the world, I will never be able to pass this exam, then his bodily stresses and his uh, mind will respond differently to the situation compared to another individual who thinks that uh, it is not a big deal, next time there will be another exam and I will show the teacher that I know much more than he thinks I do. So the individual's judgment that a stressful situation exists initiates a stress response. Now without, this is very important, without this appraisal there is no stress in the person's psychological domain or psychological schema. So that is if I think that this situation is stressful, I might be more stressed. If I think it is no big deal, then I will not be stressed. An example, say if you were asked to speak in your, uh, in a public forum when you were a child, you did not have a problem. But when the stakes grew higher, say you have to speak before a crowd uh, who are going to evaluate you on your uh, performance, how you stand, how you look, how you talk, what how, kind of vocabulary you are using, then definitely the stakes are high and you perceive this situation as more stressful than you did as a child. So now that is what the psychological, what we mean by the psychological schema and how it changes with time and with personal experiences. We will talk about this later in a different module. 
But uh, another thing that I would like to emphasize is that even though a situation is perceived as a demand or threat, it may not mobilize a, stre a stress response. That is, even if I think that this is serious, I am going to land myself in trouble or is it, it is an oh God response, but it may not mobilize uh, some of the stressful thoughts or the stressful bodily changes. Now, one of the reasons being that I feel that there is a way I can cope with it. Now, these coping strategies again we are going to discuss this later. This the coping strategies of an individual primarily um, based from his uh, internal uh, coping strategies, some are uh, from the way he thinks and some are external protective factors like family, friends, social support. So, it could be like um, if I did not do well in this exam never mind I have my friend who is uh, really great in this paper. So, he is going to help me to deal with this. So, it will not be a problem. So, I am not getting stress because I have the ability or the coping mechanism to deal with it. Now, we will uh, talk about the internal and the external factors again. Uh, but right now, we will get into the pioneers in stress research. Now, stress has been a um, uh, topic of study over centuries and even in different uh, mythological texts and biblical references, we come across stress and emotion and sudden cardiac death, which is also mentioned in the Indian mythological texts. Also, there is a biblical reference to it. There are earlier other earlier antecedents to the concept of stress, where physicians and patients have uh, linked adverse life effects, uh, life events and illness. And of course, many contemporary uh, cultures this is very interesting regard illness as the outcome of being out of balance with the environment and its demands. That is, there is an absence of harmony between the environment and the individual. I will give you an example. Think about an individual who has got a job in a city where he does not know the language, he is unaware, uh, he is not used to the food habits and he is uh, the environmental conditions are very different from where he was uh, brought, bought and uh, brought and uh, bred. So, think about uh, his harmony with the environment. Now, if he can accommodate himself to the changing demands of the environment, then he will not have a potential stressor affecting him. But if he feels that there is I cannot accommodate, I cannot adjust to the changing demands, um, say if it is a very cold country and he is not able to adjust to the uh, extreme cold harsh temperatures or if he is a very social person and he has to work in isolated conditions, then he may not have he may have adjustment problems. Now, with adjustment problems now you have to see that these actually are um, created due to a disharmony between the environment and the individual. Now, this creates a stress within the individual that brings about other uh, psychosomatic problems, other bodily issues that may create that may cause several that may be the cause of several illnesses, uh, several psychological illnesses like depression, like psychosomatic disorders, psychophysiological disorders, etcetera. So, um, now uh, talking about the pioneers, another very interesting uh, fact to observe is that the, the ma most the maximum amount of uh, stress research started during the world wars. Now, I will leave it to you to understand why uh, it was very important to understand stress during the world war. Now, one of the famous pioneers in stress research was Walter Cannon. Walter Cannon was a physiologist in Harvard Medical School and he first described body's response to stress. I will give you a situation. Imagine walking down a lonely dark alley at a, a very dimly uh, lit dark alley at night and there is nobody around 
and when you have reached almost a point of no return you see a burly figure coming with a club in his hand and approaching you how would you respond what would be the immediate thought and immediate bodily changes that you would go through i'll mention some of them it could be an increased heartbeat perspiration dryness of mouth sudden tremor muscle tense up and there could be a lot of other uh, responses that your body is going through now in many many of you would know have heard of the word adrenaline gush and people very often talk about the adrenaline gush and we respond to a situation immediately so this what is happening to the body the body is preparing itself to confront a threat and to either stand ground that is either to fight or flight or run away now walter cannon termed this response as the fight or flight response now this is the way he described body's response to stress now this is very important for the body to prepare itself to face the threat one of the reasons being that if it does not then it will be affected by the threat or rather the threat will actually overpower you in this case the burly figure might just hit you or it might um, uh, yeah, uh, uh, cause a uh, stress or cause a problem to your survival so in this case the body prepares itself to either fight or run away from this place now this a uh, concept of the fight or flight response introduced by walter cannon was uh, very much appreciated and uh, by several researchers across the world and some of the researchers actually followed up the theory and propounded the new theories and one of them being hans selly hans selly was an endocrinologist and he found uh, while working with rats he found that the rats response he introduced some stresses on the rat and he saw that there were several changes in the body that happened due to that introduction of the stressor now a stressor is something that is uh, that has a potential to create stress we will talk about this later again now he saw hanseli saw that there was his rats who were given stress stressor had uh, developed an enlargement of the adrenal cortex shrinkage of lymphatic structures and ulcers in the stomach these were to name a few of the bodily changes that happened to uh, an exposure to stressors uh, in the in his rats so selly identified that regardless of the source of stress the body responded in the same manner to a stressful situation and this he summarized as stress reactivity and this he stress reactivity he re said it was a three phase process which he termed as general adaptation syndrome uh, you can go through his famous work the stress of life in 1956 han uh, selly han selly published this work and it's a very interesting read now talking a little about the general adaptation syndrome so uh, selly said that the first phase is the alarm reaction where the body shows changes at the first exposure of the stressor so the body is identifying that there is a stressful stimulus so that is the stage of alarm reaction the next stage is the stage of resistance where the body is trying to fight the stressor so and is trying to get adapted to the stressful situation if it can adapt well and good if not the body shows signs characteristic of the uh, resistance where the resistance rises higher than the normal and definitely after that is the stage of exhaustion where long continued stressful situation 
makes the body uh, get uh, when depletes the energy of the body and leads to exhaustion. Now, the alarm reactions may reappear, but this time the body is not able to fight it. Now, I will give you an example of fever. Now, fever is where the immune system of the body is trying to fight the infectious agents like virus and bacteria. So, when a virus or a bacteria is trying to enter the body, the body first reacts by an alarm reaction. So, it is aware that there is a foreign agent trying to affect the body. The next stage is that of resistance, where the temperature of the body rises to kill these germs. Now, if the temperature that has risen is not enough to actually manage these infectious agents, then exhaustion strikes. That is, the illness strikes the individual. Now, let us see this was a biological uh, stressor where I exp explained it to you. Now, let us see what happens in a psychological situation. Say, in the alarm phase, for example, an individual is uh, has gone to a party and this individual suffers from social anxiety. So, he is anxious of what people are thinking about him, how they are uh, observing each of his movements as to what he is saying, what he is wearing, whether he is fumbling, whether he is talking a little too much. So, he is uh, this is an individual with a social anxiety gone to a party situation and he this is the first alarm. This is a serious stressor for me. The resistance phase when others are trying to involve that individual in the situation in the party. Now, he experiences different kinds of physiological changes. So, it could be that he is perspiring, he is having muscle tension, he has increased heart rate, he is fumbling for words, he is uh, trying to escape the situation. And in the exhaustion phase, if this carries on for a long time, then he may undergo an exhaustion phase where he is actually suffering from an illness. Uh, it could he, he could develop um, something like a blood pressure problem or also coronary heart disease. Now, this I have adapted from uh, Greenberg 2012. Now, Hans Selye does define stress as a non-specific response of the body to any demand upon it. So, that means, the good things. So, whether it is uh, whatever this uh, stressful demand, it could be uh, a positive demand, it could be a negative demand. So, it could be something like a good thing like a job promotion, which he must adapt to that was this is known as use stress and the bad things like uh, the bereavement or uh, leaving a place and going to a different place which must which he must adapt to again. So, this is termed distress and both these situations are actually experienced the same way physiologically. So, that is why it is very important that the life events we understand the life events that an individual is going through when we are talking about stress management. So, rather I should say when we are talking about stress. So, what are the life events that an individual is going through in the recent period of time? Because that is going to affect the physiological changes. Now, Simeon's another very interesting individual in 1961 re related evolution to psychosomatic disease. I have spoken of psychosomatic disease before. Psychosomatic disease is a bodily change, a body Ill bodily illness that is created due to a stress within the individual. Now, uh, Simeon said that the human brain has failed to develop at the pace needed to respond to symbolic stressors in the 20th century. Now, what does he mean by symbolic stressors? Symbolic stressors are stressors that are actually um, not a threat to our survival. For example, say if uh, I think that this uh, in this situation I may be ridiculed that is not 
a threat to my biological survival. Unfortunately, the brain has not developed to accommodate itself to this change or to this symbolic stressor. So, the, what does the brain do? The brain responds in the same way as it would do to a survival threat. So, say if there is a threat to the self esteem from a fear of embarrassment during public speaking, now the fight or flight response would not be a healthy response or say if you have to if you are facing if you have to face an interview and that is causing real anxiety to you running away from the interview situation the flight response or hitting the interviewer the fight response would not help you. Now, several other researchers have added to the work of Cannon, Selly and Simeons and they shed more light to the relationship of stress to the body processes. So, with this understanding we have uh, better understood several illnesses and diseases and how this the more important thing is that we have realized that we need to address the stress to prevent these conditions from developing and a lot of research has continued on how to reduce the stress burden from society. Holmes and Rahe again two very important people in 1967 they emphasized on the role of life events in stress. I was just talking about life events in stress. They showed that the more significant the changes in one's life the greater is the chance of the onset of illness. In fact, I have a paper uh, one of my uh, research work on life events suicide and stress shows that uh, the life events are a very important uh, factor as a perceived stressor to cause attempted suicides to that is to uh, force an individual to compel an individual to attempt suicide. Now, uh, Lazarus uh, de Longis and others found that daily hassles are also a very important factor and which is detrimental to health and major life changes. Harold Wolf in 1953 found that a large number of this I will explain it a little. Um, this as I told you that during the world wars there was a lot of stress research and Harold Wolf's uh, research he tried to identify why there were so many people dying in the Japanese concentration camps as compared to German concentration camps just before release. Now, there were uh, he found that around uh, 1 in 30 would die out uh, in the Japanese concentration camps. So, now this as compared to the German concentration camps which was around 1 in 100. So, this uh, was uh, very strange considering that the environmental conditions and the food and the other conditions being constant what was the reason that uh, led to so many deaths in concent Japanese concentration camps. So, he found that a large number of deaths before release uh, in inmates of Japanese concentration camps were due to an increased amount of emo emotional stress as compared to the German camps. Now, we will have to remember that most of the uh, constant people in the uh, concentration camps in uh, Germany were from nearby land. So, they were also used to uh, the they were familiar with the um, uh, so, there was some uh, familiarity with the conditions environmental conditions, but the for Japan being a far away place and maybe uh, the emotional stressor uh, was much higher as compared to uh, that in the German concentration camps. Now, this is a list that I give before you. Uh, you can go through it and you can see how very interesting research on stress uh, has been carried out across uh, centuries. Um, I would like to mention Benson and um, uh, Jacobson who later worked on uh, relaxation training. We will talk about relaxation training in a different module, but this is very important because Benson and uh, uh, Jacobson showed 
that with relaxation you can actually reduce the stress response and that this was uh, identified as one of the major um, areas uh, ways to relieve stress. Now, to summarize we have uh, seen what uh, stress is and why individuals differ in their stress response and we have explored the history and genesis of stress. In the next module we shall discuss about the sources of stress, learn to distinguish between new stress and distress and find out how stress can also be helpful to the individual. Thank you.